So the question we're faced with here is what does it mean to describe something? Ideas about description in information science are heavily influenced by library science and the practice of librarianship. There's a whole discussion to be had about the relationship between information science and library science, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Um, suffice it to say, the school that I teach for the, is the School of Information and Library Science. So at least at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, we consider those two things to fall under the same umbrella. And I'm going to just leave it at that because this is a fairly highly contentious topic of discussion in the field. The point is, is that libraries and librarians have been describing things for more than 2,000 years. They're really good at it. Right? Libraries have given the rest of the world a lot of insight into how to describe things effectively. And by effectively, what I mean is for the purposes of storage and later retrieval and use by the users of the library. Um, 2,000 years ago, of course, libraries didn't have books the way we know them today. This format, the codex with pages and a binding and everything, um, was probably invented by the Romans. Just a little bit of history thrown in there. Um, but it really took off with the invention of printing and this fellow, Johannes Gutenberg, um, now, 2,000 years ago, libraries contained mostly, if not exclusively, papyrus scrolls and other kinds of things. By some accounts, ancient libraries uh, were more like museums are today, in fact. Some maybe even had zoos. Um, they may have been multiple buildings, entire campuses. Uh, but this is neither here nor there. That's just a little history lesson because I couldn't restrain myself. Uh, the point is, even if you're storing scrolls, though, you still need to describe them, right, as a way to help people who want to get access to them to read them. Even if you're storing zebras and ostriches in a zoo, right, you still need to describe them as a way to help people understand what it is that they're looking at. Now, it's not known how many scrolls the ancient library at Alexandria had, which is what this picture is, incidentally. But by some accounts, it may have been as many as half a million scrolls. Now, that's a big collection, even today. You're not going to find much unless you have some, what are called in library jargon, access points. Right? You need a point of access into those half a million items. So the classic access points are title, author, and subject. Right? If you've ever used a library, those are probably the ones that you, you've used in that context. I actually don't know if the ancient library at Alexandria used those as access points, but honestly, that's not the point. The point is libraries have learned over the centuries and millennia that simple description is effective. If you're looking for a book or a scroll or what have you, the most obvious things you as a reader might care about are what's it called, who wrote it, and what's it about. This is, again, what's called descriptive metadata because it describes the book. There are lots of kinds of descriptive metadata. We've already talked about some. We'll talk about more. The world is full of examples of descriptive metadata, right? Street signs. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Pomerantz, right? The number of your house, your street address, right? All of these are descriptive metadata. I'm sure you can think of more examples. The world is also full of other kinds of metadata. The labels here maybe weren't intended 
to be metadata, but I think you can make a reasonable case that they actually are metadata. These are standardized packaging labels, which uh, mean this side up, keep away from water, keep away from sunlight, and obviously handle with care. Moreover, these are what is known as administrative metadata. metadata. Administrative metadata provides information to help you manage or administer something, right? Such as how to care for it, who gets access to it, etc. And there are even subcategories of administrative metadata, and we'll get to that later. The important thing is when you're describing something, that often includes some description of what the thing is about, the subject. In information science, the task of determining what something is about is often called subject analysis. The main task of subject analysis is, as you would probably expect, figuring out what the subject is of the thing you're describing, assuming that that thing has a subject. In some cases, that's fairly easy. What's this video about? It's about description, right? How do we know that this video is about description? Well, of course, we could watch the video and listen to the audio and make the determination that that's what I'm talking about. Also, the title of the video is description, which is a pretty good indication. Now, titles aren't always a good indication of what something is about. The novel, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius. Is that actually a heartbreaking work of staggering genius? Well, some people probably think so, but it's a fairly subjective judgment call. On the other hand, the movie Iron Man. What's that about? It's about Iron Man. The title actually is a good descriptor. So in this case, the title of this video, Description, is descriptive. Another way to determine what something is about, of course, is to read it or watch it or otherwise consume it in whatever way is appropriate for the medium. Because the title doesn't always do it for you, right? What is the novel Moby Dick about? Well, Moby Dick is the name of a whale, so obviously the book is about whales, QED. Well, sort of, right? Moby Dick is about a lot more than just whales, and what you have to do in subject analysis is figure out what, the, what are called significant characteristics are of the thing you're describing. Now, both of those words, significant and characteristics, are kind of tricky. What is significant and what is a characteristic? Right? Is it significant that a characteristic of this particular edition of Moby Dick is 500 pages long? Or that it's a paperback? Or that it's illustrated? Right? It depends on what you care about. It's a subjective judgment call sometimes. But we'll ignore that for the moment, since neither of those things have anything to do with the subject. So, you may be wondering, where do the words that you're using to describe the thing, the book, the movie, the video, whatever, where do the words that you use to describe the thing come from? Do you just make them up? Does somebody tell you what words to use? We'll get to that in a few minutes. So the problem with subject analysis really comes when you try to describe something that doesn't have a subject, like a lot of music. Now, some music does, in fact, have a subject or something like it, right? Some pieces of music are deliberately about something. But a lot of music doesn't. A lot of music is more abstract than that. And in cases where music, or, or any art form really, uh, is just for itself, where it doesn't have a subject, 
description using subject really doesn't make a lot of sense. And we'll talk about how to describe something when aspects or facets of a thing don't apply. We'll talk about that later. Now, as a slight aside before we wrap up this particular discussion of description, um, in information science, the word aboutness is often used instead of the word subject. Now, the idea is that the word aboutness is less ambiguous than the word subject. That aboutness, the, the word aboutness, makes it clear that we're talking about what something is about. And that subject may not, in fact, be the same as what something is about. For example, the subject of Moby Dick is a whale, but it's about revenge and obsession and a number of other themes. Right? Honestly, that may be splitting hairs, and there's some debate in the information science world about whether subject and aboutness are or are not really different. So I won't mention aboutness probably ever again in this entire course. But I did want to mention it here because you do see the term used in information science a lot, and if you come across it, you really need to understand what it's about. Ha.